Now, the annual summit of the World Economic Forum is presently underway in Davos in Switzerland. Business and world leaders from across the globe are attending this event. And they're there to discuss and debate over several issues. And one of the key issues that, of course, is the hot topic at Davos this year is climate change. In one of the opening speeches, the founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, asserted that the world is facing some unprecedented challenges and is moving towards increased fragmentation and confrontation. Our generation has reached a turning point confronted by truly existential problems. Climate change, exploitation of nature, nuclear possible incidents, or even worse, extreme poverty and viruses. But Klaus Schwab also sounded a positive note. He said that through collective responsibility, innovation, human goodwill and ingenuity, humans have the capacity to turn the challenges into opportunities. The leaders at Davos are discussing the many crises that the world is presently gripped by, including the Russia-Ukraine war and also the increase in the global temperature due to the climate crisis. In 2022, we saw as to have an increase in temperature had led to devastation across the globe. From the floods in Pakistan that inundated almost about a third of the country and killed about 1,700 people and displaced thousands of others, to the heat wave in Europe, where the continent witnessed a drastic rise in temperature. In the month of July, and the United Kingdom recorded 40.3 degrees Celsius, breaking the previous record of 38.7 degrees Celsius. Moreover, the rise in temperature has also resulted in wildfires in Spain and France. If you look at the Horn of Africa, the region has been experiencing one of its worst droughts in decades, forcing millions of people to relocate in search of food due to the lack of food. Malnutrition has been on the rise, especially amongst the children. So the World Economic Forum leaders and policymakers are trying to make sure that the ongoing climate crisis is addressed and some steps are taken to try and curb it. The U.S. climate envoy John Kerry was very vocal about the climate crisis. He said the time is running out for the world to tackle climate change. And he was not convinced that it would get a low carbon economy in time to avoid the worst impact for some of the most vulnerable people. Moreover, according to John Kerry, what is of course needed is to tackle climate change and to deliver a low carbon economy. And what he said is needed is money and resources for the world. Hay incendio por todos lados, está, está terrible, la sequía que hay, eh, todo seco, no llueve nada, y esto va, va a seguir para rato, hasta que no llueva va a seguir. But the Pakistani climate change minister Sherry Rahman, meanwhile, has called for global action to curb greenhouse gas emissions, saying that countries like hers are in fact suffering the worst consequences of climate change. I have said this before, but I say it again. I'm convinced we will get to a low carbon, no carbon economy. We're going to get there because we have to. I am not convinced we're going to get there in time to do what the scientists said, which is avoid the worst consequences of the crisis. So how do we get there? Well, the lesson I've learned in the last years, and I learned it as secretary and I've learned it since, reinforced in spades, is money, 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 money. All right, now to give us more perspective in terms of what is, of course, being discussed in Davos and how this may have an impact in terms of how the world leaders will make their policies, to give us more insights on that, we're being joined by Mr. Sven Tviedal, who's joining us live from Norway. He's the former assistant executive director of the United Nations Environment Programme and also the director of Klima 2020. Uh, Mr. Tviedal, thank you very much indeed for joining us on this broadcast here in Vyond. The question that I want to ask you is this. The Davos is this resort town in the Swiss Alps where all these business and political leaders have gathered in the past. The World Economic Forum has been described as nothing more than a talking shop. Do you think the business and political leaders will put their heads together to come up with some solutions that can address climate change? Yeah, well, um, the meeting um, that goes on in Davos now will not come up with concrete action that will help us to meet the um, uh, global uh, uh, climate goals, the limiting warming to 1.5 degree. Uh, but characteristic for the meeting in Davos is that there is a lot of rich people there. 
uh, which has a big impact on uh, on emissions. Uh, the the airport is full of um, uh, private jets there, and um, just um, a couple of hours ago, uh, the Secretary General uh, uh, Guterres held a speech there to um, where he addressed um, uh, the fossil fuel industry and said that business. Their, their business models are inconsistent with the human survival. The situation is very serious. So what I think can happen in Davos is that these people that are there, that are representing the fossil fuel industry, is listening to the uh, negative impact I have on keeping global climate goals and maybe uh, go back home and, and hopefully uh, make some changes to their um, policy. You know, to keep uh, the goal of 1.5 C degree, mm -hmm. we need to half the emissions in uh, the next seven years. And right. the biggest oil companies, they will increase by 20%. So we go towards 2.8 degree warming. I think that's, that's a very crucial point that you've made as to have, with how much of a quantum will we miss this target of reducing global warming on planet Earth. But the question that I want to, want to ask you is this. You know, with the political developments that we've been witnessing with this war in Ukraine, you know, what we've witnessed is a world that is deeply divided. To address climate change, nations will have to come together and pull in the same direction. But now, because European nations, such as France and even, for instance, Britain, they're expanding on their coal mines that they already have. Do you think that these nations can actually meet the targets that they've set for themselves or will the geopolitical tensions that we are witnessing result in a situation where these targets of keeping you know, the temperature rise below 1.5 degrees Celsius is now simply out of the window? No, I don't think they will, they will reach their targets. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, we have to see this in a, in a little bit broader context because if we had... Um, listen to scientists some years ago and speeded up the production of renewable energy, then we would not have been in this trap that we are now in Europe related to the energy crisis. You know, in order to reach 1.5 C, we need to uh, cripple the production of renewable energy in the next seven, eight years. Uh, so what happens now is and it's possible to understand that uh, Germany is uh, is uh, firing up a new coal mine. Mm -hmm. We will go one step back, but on the other hand, maybe this will trigger a faster transition to renewable energy. So hopefully, in right. a year or two, we will see we will see a, um, a much faster uh, 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 increase of production of renewable energy. All right, very interesting. We'll, of course, wait and watch as to how that pans out. But thank you very much indeed, Mr. Sventi Adal, for joining us from Arendel in Norway and getting us those insights there.